This week, I'm gonna show you the difference between the 14 mm and the 24 mm Samyang for astrophotography. When I'm out shooting the stars, I use both lenses regularly. But if you can only afford one, I'm gonna show you the differences between the two and which one I would choose as these are fast prime manual lenses. They're great for astrophotography. So this is what I'm focusing on today. This is in no way a scientific test. It's just me, my camera, and the two lenses. I like to know where the infinity point is on these lenses before going out at night. So in the daytime, I'll get the camera on a tripod and I'll focus the lens to infinity. Then I'll use the magnify tool to focus in on something on the horizon, making sure I know exactly where the infinity point is. On the 24 mm it's where it's marked on the lens. On my 14 mm it's just on the inside of this mark. I'll remember this, so when I go out at night, I can put it exactly on this point, and I'll know I'm focused to infinity. With the 14 mm the angle is really wide. You'll get lots of sky in, you will get a fair bit of distortion because of the front element, it's really hard to get a filter for it. You can get an adapter, which fits a square filter on, but this is quite expensive. The aperture is 2.8, so it's okay for astrophotography. I'd like wider, but 2.8 is okay, and you can get some really good shots with it. Taking into account the focal length, you can take your shutter speed to 30 seconds without the stars streaking. This is using the 500 rule. And at 552 grams, it is quite a heavy lens, especially for a prime. With a 24 millimeter, it's a little bit more of a natural angle. You won't get as much of the Milky Way in the shot, but you won't get as much distortion on the edges as with the 14. The front element isn't as bulbous as the 14 millimeter, and it has a 77 millimeter thread. So you can put filters on it if you're shooting long exposures in the day. The aperture is 1.4, so it's two stops brighter than the 14 mm Taking the 500 rule into account, with a 24 mm focal length, you can take your shutter speeds to around about 20 seconds. This lens is 580 grams, so it's a little bit heavier than the 14 mm So they're the noticeable differences on the surface, but let's have a look to see what images both of these lenses produce and what that difference in focal length actually means. So I took a series of shots. I've done a light edit on them just to make the Milky Way come out. I also lit the foreground a little bit with a torch because it was so dark. These are all single exposures. So this is the 14 millimeter. You can see it's got a lot of the Milky Way in. The ISO is 6,400 and the exposure was 15 seconds. I was shooting at 2.8 and obviously 14 millimeters. I was also able to get a large chunk of the foreground in. If I switch over to the 24, you can see how much narrower the shot is. The Milky Way fills the frame a little bit more. Also, if you look at the ISO, I was able to bring it down to 2000. This is because I was shooting at f1.4. So I had ISO 2000, f1.4 at 15 seconds. And if we zoom in, we can see at 15 seconds, the stars are round, so they haven't started to streak. With the 14 millimeter, with the 500 rule, I know at 15 seconds, the stars aren't gonna streak at all. And as you can see, they're nice round stars. So this is the main difference. The optical qualities of these two lenses is very similar. So you can see the difference between the two focal lengths. Now, if we go into landscape mode, this is the 24 millimeter, and this is the 14 millimeter. You can see how much wider the 14 millimeter will get. If the Milky Way was laying flatter in the sky, the landscape would be really good. And I've actually got a shot back here. This is where I was trying to look for a spot. You can see the Milky Way is laying a lot flatter. I put the camera behind my car and I used a torch to light the car a little bit, as well as the lights on the inside of the car. This is where the 14 millimeter is really good where you have the Milky Way laying low in the sky. You can get something in the foreground, although you can see how badly the car is distorted. So it depends how much distortion you like. Some people don't like any distortion, others don't mind it. It's all personal preference. One thing to note is when you're shooting with a 24 millimeter and the Milky Way is vertical, you won't get much of it in the shot unless the core is sitting really low in the sky. 
With a 14 millimeter, it can be laying flat or it can be vertical and you'll still get most of it in the shot. You'll also be able to get a lot of the foreground in the shot with the 14 millimeter. So I'd say for portraits, the 24 millimeters is really good. You can get really close to the Milky Way. With a 14 millimeter, landscapes work better, especially because of that distortion at the edges. When you're in portrait mode, anything on the ground in the shot will be heavily distorted when it's at the edge of the frame. In this next shot, I've tried to get the Milky Way at a 45 degree angle through the shot. As you can see, the 14 millimeter down in this bottom right hand corner has caught the land. That is how wide it is. If we go over to the 24 millimeter, you can see how much closer it is. You can get a nice shot of the core with this angle. Once I took those test shots, I had a bit of a walk around to see what I could get with the different lenses and to see what worked better with each lens. Again, if I go back to this shot of my car, this shot works really well with a 14 millimeter. When you got the Milky Way at around about a 30 to 45 degree angle, you can get it streaking above whatever your subject is on the ground. But just to note again, the distortion is pretty bad, especially towards the edges of the frame. If we look at this next shot, this was a big aerial tower that we drove up to. You can see I've got lots of the Milky Way in, but this is really leaning away and my car is really badly distorted. And this is what I was talking about, shooting in portrait mode you'll get lots of distortion towards the edges of the frame. Sometimes this distortion doesn't matter too much, like this shot of a dune. I've got the lines leading up to the Milky Way and the Milky Way coming away from it. If I shot this one again, I'd probably get less of the dune, but I kind of like it. I used a torch to light the dune to get the ripples really showing. Then what I did was walk to the top of the dune and change over to the 24 millimeter. Here, I've lined up the top of the dune with the bottom of the Milky Way. So all of the lines kind of point into this middle point. I then walked to the top of the dune and did a bit of a self-portrait, shining my torch up to the Milky Way. You can see in this shot how dark it was. Then I tried a few different shots on the tops of different dunes. I used my torch to light this dune, and I think I might have layered this a little bit in Photoshop. I think I had one image with the light on this side of the dune, and then another image with the light on this side of the dune. But the Milky Way is still a single exposure. So you can see with these two different lenses, you can get different types of shots. Even though the 24 millimeter has a much wider aperture, I tend to reach for the 14 millimeter a lot more. I like big wide angled shots with a lot of the Milky Way in that shot especially when I have a really big landscape underneath the Milky Way. When I'm adding a human aspect to the shot, say a person or a vehicle, I'll tend to go portrait with the 24 millimeters. I'll wait till the Milky Way is in the right position using photo pills, and then I'll take the shot with that lens. I'd say if you can only afford one of these lenses, get the 14 millimeter. If your budget isn't an issue, get both, or even get the lower 15 millimeter F2, which will let in a stop more of light. It also has a lot less distortion, although it is $850 at the making of this video, which is about twice the price of the Samyang. And that's about it. If you like those big wide shots showing a lot of the Milky Way, get the 14 millimeter. If you don't like the distortion of the 14 millimeter and you don't mind cropping it a little bit tighter, then go for the 24 millimeter. You'll have the advantage of those two extra stops of light and it can be a fun lens to use in the day as well. If you are not sure about astrophotography but want to learn how to take shots like the ones I've shown you, click on the eye in the corner. This will take you to one of my videos taking you step by step through the process. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next one.